So is this the best mouse for video editing in 2021? God, I hope so. When I first started the channel, I never expected that I would be reviewing mice. Although I never really expected that I was gonna be replacing my mouse either, but here we are. Hey, what's up? If this is our first time meeting, my name's Ray. Welcome to my channel. I like to help out creative entrepreneurs. Sometimes it's video editing. Today we're talking about mice and video editing with mice. So hit subscribe if you haven't already, and now let's get into this. So I'm actually gonna leave a link down below to both the mice that I was torn on, both the G604 and the MX Master 3. Throughout this video, I'm gonna talk mostly about this one, but also what made me ultimately decide to go with this instead of the G604. But you know what? If during this video, you think that the G604 is for you, then, you know, then it's for you. If not, then maybe this is the mouse for you. When you think about computer mice and video editing, generally you don't. It's one of the most overlooked computer prohibitals ever. Usually people are more focused on getting a second monitor or upgrading their GPU or even their hard drive. Don't neglect your mouse though, because you actually use this thing more than you use anything else. Functionally, it's more important than your morning coffee, because let's face it, using your touchpad for anything more than web browsing <laughs> sucks. So why did I decide to upgrade my mouse? Well, recently, my generic cheap-ass Walmart mouse that I got for like 13 bucks five years ago decided to get lazy and not carry its weight anymore. So it needed to go. You need to go. Buying a mouse was not really on my agenda of things that I wanted to accomplish this week, and I really needed a mouse because using a touchpad, as we've covered, is like, eh. So when you Google the best mouse for video editing in 2021, there's a lot of options that come up. Although eliminating most of them is going to be a pretty easy task because some of them are just super generic and they're super basic mice, which there's nothing wrong with. I used a very basic mouse for the last like five years. It can definitely be done. In fact, while I was searching for it, I didn't even realize that mice came with all the different features that they actually come with now. I thought it was just point, click, and you're done. Like, that's it. So ultimately, there were two mice that stood out. One was the G604, which is made by Logitech. The other was the MX Master 3, which is also made by Logitech. As a gaming mouse, the G604 is definitely a very tempting mouse with 15 different buttons, but at the end of the day, I didn't think that I needed 15 buttons on my mouse. I kind of felt like that was a little bit overkill for my actual usage. And with a stream deck that I already have, I don't need any extra buttons to try and keep track of and create muscle memory and then change it around. Like it's just, it's not something that's gonna work for me. Ultimately, I ended up going with the MX Master 3. And I really do believe that I made the best choice at the end of the day because with the MX Master 3, it still has seven buttons and it has things that I didn't even know were things. It has features that I didn't know were features. Now, there were a couple of extra features that I found out about after I'd purchased the mouse that I actually fell in love with. And now if I ever upgrade a mouse again, it's gonna need to have those. Let's start at the very beginning though, with setup. Setup was actually very straightforward and very easy. So initially, when you go to set up this mouse, you're gonna go to mxsetup.logi.com. It's gonna have you download the software. It's gonna ask you a couple of really basic questions about how you wanna to connect to the computer. And then it just works, really. It's, the setup is super simple. Once you get the software set up, you're gonna be able to customize your mouse any way that you want to, which is kinda of cool. So looking at your mouse naturally, you have the left click and the right click buttons. Then you're gonna have the scroll wheel in the center of it, which is one of my favorite features. I mean, naturally you have a scroll wheel and it acts like a third button. This wheel is a little bit special though, because this is what Logitech calls mag speed. It's a magnetic scroll wheel and a button. And just like your girlfriend, it can go from smooth to ratchet in an instant. All you do is click this button and it's so smooth. Like I can't, I can't really tell you how smooth it is. Listen to this. You probably can't even hear it. That's how smooth it is. And it's still rolling too. If I push the button again, then it's in ratchet mode. 
then you can start to hear it a little bit. There was a sticker on the bottom of the mouse, which gave you directions, letting you know different features that are actually on the rear side of the mouse. Kind of crazy, right? Did you know the bottom of your mouse is going to have a bunch of different features? Neither did I. One of them, naturally, is a power switch. Then you're going to have the optical reader on the bottom, which has a resolution of 4000 DPI, whereas the G604 actually had one as high as 16 or 25,000. That might be overkill. Maybe not for gaming, though. Not if like, every little movement matters. Yeah, definitely. Video editing, design, and all that, like, nah, you don't need it. One feature that I didn't actually realize was a thing, but I am super excited because this is something that was driving me nuts with this mouse and switching it between my Dell and my HP laptops, is that this can connect to three different computers and seriously, you just push a button and it switches which computer that it's going to work with, which is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. It does work through Bluetooth connection. At the same time, it can work through a dongle too. Now, because my Dell has Bluetooth and my HP doesn't, this is a really perfect situation for me. I can just use this in my HP while I'm web designing and I can use Bluetooth on here and I just have to push a button. I don't need to unplug a dongle and then plug it back in and wait a second for the computer to catch up to what it is that I'm trying to do. I just push a button and look at a different computer. That's it. Crazy, right? Exciting, right? I'm excited. I love this. One of the biggest things that really annoyed me about this mouse was the batteries. And this is probably the thing that steered me away from getting the G604. Batteries. Replaceable batteries. Needing needing to replace the batteries. First of all, batteries are expensive. Second of all, they're bad for the environment. So having replaced the entire battery aspect of things is just it makes it easier because with this, there is a USB-C port right on the front here for quick charging. And I do mean quick charging. Even though this is probably going to be fully charged when you first open the box, it's still really cool to know that you can plug it in for one minute and get three hours of usage out of it. Like seriously, the people at Logitech and the people at Samsung and Apple all need to get together and have a conversation because if I can get three hours of usage after one minute of charging on this, I definitely want to get three hours of usage with one minute of charging on this. Can we make that a thing? And then, of course, a full charge on this will last about six months. So you're pretty much never going to need to plug this in. Cool, so when you open up the software and you get everything all set up, you're going to be greeted with this screen right here where you have an option to go between the mouse, the point and scroll, and flow. So all of this allows you to be able to reprogram the buttons that are on your mouse for different purposes. And not only does it work for all applications, you can set it to change depending on what application that you're actually running. So you can set it up for DaVinci Resolve. I also have it set up for GIMP, Microsoft Edge, and Zoom. So I don't have to, yeah, it's crazy. Your mouse can control Zoom. With a couple of buttons, you turn off your microphone and your video. It's so much easier than reaching over and trying to play with my stream deck or try and click something on the screen. It actually is because I just hold the mouse and I'm just like, click, 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 boom. Each one of these circles is a reprogrammable button. So naturally you have your forward and your backward button. You can reprogram those. You can also reprogram your thumb wheel. For DaVinci Resolve, I've been using this a ton to scroll forwards and backwards on my timeline and I, I've never used a thumb wheel before. It's been very useful because normally I have to hold shift and push forward, or I have to shift and backwards, or I have to try and scroll through the screen, click all these extra clicks. But no, now it's just like, I just roll it to the left, I roll it to the right. So this has been super useful so far as well. And I didn't think it was going to be. Now my next mouse, if I ever get another mouse, which hopefully I don't because this one wasn't exactly the cheapest mouse out there, it needs to have a thumb wheel. That's just it. It needs a thumb wheel. Can only go up from here. One thing that I didn't even know about until I purchased the mouse was this right here, which is gestures. You can set up these buttons to do gestures. What are you talking about? Okay, cool. So we're going to click on this one, for example, right? So this button right here, which is the seventh button, if I hold it down or if I just tap it, 
it's gonna show me by default my desktop layout screen and all the different things that I looked at recently. If I hold it down and I push to the right, it'll show me my next desktop. If I have an next desktop, I don't, I never really use that feature with Windows. Um, same thing with using my previous desktop. I can push it down and slide it to the left. If I hold it down and push it up, it's gonna show me my start menu. If I hold it down and slide it down, it's gonna show me my desktop. But what I can do is actually change this to custom right here and I can assign them to do anything from keystrokes to opening applications. The world is literally at your fingertips. This is something that I'm like super, super excited about. It's just, I haven't had a chance to play with it to really figure out which actions are gonna be the most useful for the tasks that I have at hand. Mostly for like DaVinci Resolve. And I'm thinking once I have an opportunity to play around with it and see what would be the most useful for mouse action, then this is something that I'm gonna be using a ton. If we go over to point and scroll, we can change the sensitivity on it. We can change whether or not it's in ratchet mode or if it's in free spin mode as far as the center wheel right here. And again, you can do this for all applications or you can make it application specific. Now, the reason why you would want to set the ratchet or free spin mode here is in case you decided to redefine what this button right here does, because by default, it turns on and turns off the, the ratchet mode. The last option in this software, which I think is a really, really cool thing, but unfortunately it doesn't work on Linux. It does only work between Windows and Mac is Logitech Flow. So essentially what you can do is you'll start off on one screen and you'll move your mouse over to the side and it'll end up on the other computer on the other screen. So it'll actually switch between computers. It'll let you copy files, text, images, like you name it from one computer to the other and not even interrupt your workflow. So this thing is like a super game changer and I wish, I really do wish that they had an option for Linux on here because then I don't even have to lift this up and push a button, but if this is an option that you can use, then definitely you might want to use it. I want to use it. <laughs> I really do. Come on, Logitech. Hire some Linux developers, will ya? So what do I think so far after using this for a couple of days? I think that it's really easy to use. It feels good in my hand. It actually feels like I'm holding something versus my other cheap mouse. This though is super smooth and I can just move it around. I think the biggest issue that I have with this mouse right now is just that I have to get used to all the extra features that are a part of it. So as I was saying before, I haven't set up gestures yet because I don't know which actions are gonna be the most useful to me. And once I do figure that out, that's definitely gonna be my go-to. The thing is, if I had gone with the G604, not only would I not have had the mag speed ratchet switcher scroll wheel, but I wouldn't have had quick charge, which is something that I've already fallen in love with. I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't have gestures. All I would have is like 15 extra buttons. Eight, eight extra buttons. This thing can do everything that I need it to do and I'm not disappointed with my decision at all. I'm getting used to this thumb wheel. I really do enjoy this thumb wheel. And that was another thing that was not a part of the G604. And this thing's actually grown on me. So I absolutely love it. So is this the best mouse for video editing in 2021? God, I hope so. So I am gonna leave a link down below to the G604 and the MX Master 3. You know, the G604, if you like the idea of having 15 different buttons on your mouse and you're not gonna get confused, then you know that's probably the mouse for you. Or maybe this is the mouse for you because you fell in love with the mag wheel ratchet switcher or the gestures. With that said, are you looking for a new mouse? Are you currently using one of these mice? I wanna know about it down in the comments below. Smash that like button if you got value out of this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe because I'm coming out with more videos all the time. And until next time, I'll catch you later.